What I wish I knew about finding faith. Together instead of alone. Join our community for daily readings, reflections and teachings. Let's deepen our faith and support each other on this journey. Subscribe now and be part of our Catholic family. You are listening to Catholic Daily Mass readings and reflections. First reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the gods, in the heart of the seas. Yet you are but a man and no God, though you make your heart like the heart of a God. You are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have made wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in your trade, you have increased your wealth, and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Therefore thus says, The Lord God, because you make your heart like the heart of a god, therefore, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you, the most ruthless of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. Will you still say, I am a god, in the presence of those who kill you, that you are but a man and no god, in the hands of those who slay you? You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of foreigners, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Your response. It is I who deal death and give life. I would have said, I will cut them to pieces. I will wipe them from human memory. Had I not feared provocation by the enemy, lest their adversaries should misunderstand. Your response. It is I who deal death and give life. Lest they should say, Our hand is triumphant. It was not the Lord who did all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. Your response, it is I who deal death and give life. How could one have chased a thousand, and two have put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, and the Lord had given them up? Your response, it is I who deal death and give life. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and their doom comes swiftly. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. Your response, it is I who deal death and give life. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. Though Jesus Christ was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible but with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. The Gospel of the Lord. Before we share today's reflections, we kindly ask you to give this video a like and leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We'd love to have you join our community. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Peace be with you. The readings today present a profound warning against pride and a call to embrace humility, themes deeply rooted in Catholic teaching. 
In Ezekiel 28 verses 1 to 10, the prophecy against the prince of Tyre serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of pride. The prince, who had become arrogant because of his wealth and wisdom, is rebuked by God. His self-exaltation led him to believe that he was like a god, a fatal error that led to his downfall. This passage echoes the church's teachings on the sin of pride, which is considered the root of all sin. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, CCC, teaches that pride is an inordinate self-esteem or self-love that seeks self-advancement and glorification at the expense of others and God's sovereignty, CCC 1866. In the Gospel reading from Matthew 19 verses 23 to 30, Jesus' teaching on the difficulty of the rich entering the kingdom of heaven further illustrates the dangers of attachment to material wealth. The rich young man's inability to part with his possessions exemplifies the challenge many face in fully committing to God. The church teaches that material wealth is not inherently evil, but it becomes problematic when it leads to greed, selfishness, and detachment from God's will. Jesus' metaphor of the camel and the needle powerfully conveys the spiritual peril that can accompany wealth when it is prioritized over God. This reflects the church's understanding that true happiness and fulfillment are found not in material possessions, but in living a life centered on God's love and commandments. CCC 2544. Both readings emphasize the perils of pride and self reliance, especially when rooted in material wealth or human wisdom. The Prince of Tyre's fate in Ezekiel's prophecy is a powerful reminder that no amount of wealth, wisdom, or power can make one invincible before God. His downfall is a direct consequence of his failure to recognize that his achievements and possessions were gifts from God, not reasons for self-exaltation. Similarly, in the Gospel, Jesus' warning to his disciples highlights the spiritual danger of becoming too attached to wealth. The rich young man's reluctance to give up his possessions under the challenge of living a life of total dependence on God. The church teaches that detachment from material wealth is essential for spiritual growth and the attainment of eternal life. This detachment is not merely about giving up possessions, but about recognizing that our true treasure lies in our relationship with God and in serving others. CCC 2545. The church's teachings on humility and detachment from material wealth are grounded in the understanding that pride is the root of all sin leading us away from God. The Catechism teaches that the first sin of man was a sin of pride, CCC 398. This pride leads to a disordered love of self, which blinds us to the truth of our dependence on God and our need for His grace. St. Thomas Aquinas, in his Summa Theologica, elaborates on the sin of pride, describing it as the excessive love of one's own excellence which leads to contempt for God and others. Aquinas emphasizes that humility, the opposite of pride, is essential for living a virtuous life. Humility allows us to recognize our true position before God and others, fostering a spirit of gratitude and dependence on God's grace. The Church also teaches that wealth and possessions are not evil in themselves, but must be used in accordance with God's will. The Catechism instructs that, Love for the poor is incompatible with a moderate love of riches, or their selfish use, cc 2445. This teaching is reflected in the Gospel, where Jesus calls his followers to prioritize their spiritual well-being over material wealth. The Church encourages the faithful to practice the virtue of generosity, using their resources to serve others and build up the kingdom of God. In our lives, we are often tempted to place our trust in our abilities, wealth, or status, much like the Prince of Tyre and the rich young man. The world values self-sufficiency and success, but today's readings challenge us to reassess where we place our confidence. Do we, like the Prince of Tyre, rely too much on our achievements? Or do we, like the rich young man, hold on too tightly to our possessions? The Church calls us to embrace humility and detachment, recognizing that all we have is a gift from God and should be used in service to others.
we are reminded that our true worth is not measured by our wealth or achievements, but by our relationship with God and our willingness to follow His will. By cultivating a spirit of humility and generosity, we open ourselves to the grace that leads to eternal life. Reflect on areas of your life where pride or attachment to material things might be hindering your relationship with God. Ask the Lord for the grace to grow in humility and to place your trust entirely in Him. Consider how you can use the resources and talents God has given you to serve others and build His kingdom. The church's call to holiness is a call to live in humility. Recognizing our dependence on God and our responsibility to love and serve others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for reminding us of the importance of humility and trust in you. Help us to let go of anything that stands in the way of fully following you. May we always recognize that everything we have is a gift from you and use it wisely for your glory. Strengthen our hearts to seek your kingdom above all else. Amen. Thank you for being with us. God bless you all.